Yeah. All right, we're on the air. Yeah. All right, let's uh, just open up in prayer first. Um, actually, Russ, would you mind opening us? Sure. Us up in prayer? Yeah. Good. Lord, thank you uh, again that we uh, just take time away from the busy schedules, busy time to come and sit at your feet and just enjoy your word and, and set aside and look to you as the author and finish of our faith. And we just thank you for this time to study together in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hey, Russ. <coughs> okay. I don't suppose, well, maybe you guys did, but I don't suppose you had a chance to listen to the, or did you even know about the, the sermon that is attached to each lesson that is online? No. Oh, okay. Did you happen to listen to it? Yeah, I did. We went like three times to so, okay. Yeah, you know, I still think less, the third one is my favorite one. But this was very. Um, so none of those where you, you kind of know most of it, but it puts it in perspective for you. Yeah. So at least for me, that's what it did. Just I understand these things about Jesus, but MacArthur does a really good job of just putting it in for make, make, making it make sense. Yeah, so, for sure. And that helped the lesson too. I listened to it a couple times before I went through the lesson, and then so as I was doing it, you know, it was already you know, there's already something there. So. Yeah. So there's a lesson attached to. It's a sermon that's on MacArthur's website, though, which is gty.org. Okay. Grace to you, gty.org. <clears throat> and he he's recorded probably thousands of messages since the '60s. They're all on his website, and so. For each of these lessons, he has attached one of those sermons that applies to whatever lesson, whatever we're studying. So in this case, it was the person of Jesus Christ, so the message was about that, it was about who Jesus is, fully God and fully human. So, um, Once you go on the page, they're all listed, right? You say lesson one, lesson two, you just, uh, it's one yeah. page, so it's really easy. One, it, it's great, yes. Yeah, so, let's see. Oh yeah, sorry. So, this is the website, gty.org, and then slash FOF for Fundamentals of Faith. Um, and then that, it'll have all the sermons that you need to okay. listen to. So. Yeah, they're worth listening to, but give yourself an hour at least for 20. Yeah, okay. It's, like this one's was 105. <coughs> uh, I think there this are some was, that are this up was to 120. Real, this was a long, because I, I I had to do my walk and then still sit in my truck for like 10 minutes to yeah. finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it takes about an hour to walk. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, what, the longest one I've seen is one, one hour, 21 minutes. Wow. So, I mean, that's a long sermon. I don't know how he's able to talk that long with a long time. But it goes fast, at least for me, those those messages, when I hear them, it goes fast. I usually listen to them when I'm running. Um, or if I'm just doing work like around the house, just, you know, Monday and things that I don't, I don't need to think, yeah. I'll listen to it in my headphones. But uh, it's, it always goes by fast for me. Um, so, first of all, did, did anyone have anything about this lesson as far as the questions or about the sermon that stuck out to you or any questions you had about anything he said or about anything that's in here? Or, or just any questions in general about the person of Jesus?
But yeah, I think the way MacArthur put it is that this man uh, who's quoting said it's, it's amazing to me that the creator of the universe became one of these. When you think about the universe and how big it is, right? He, he talked about in the sermon, he talked about the star Betelgeuse, which is massive, you know, red giant star. Um, Bigger than our solar system. I think. He, he, it's, I think he said the diameter of it is as big as the Earth's orbit. Oh, that, that's what it was like. Which, I mean, think about how big the sun is and then how far away the Earth is and then the orbit around the sun. That's how big this star is. And then that's just one of billions and billions of stars. That's how big God is. And he became a little baby, helpless, you know, he knew God got, can't do anything. That's, that's what God became for us. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it amazing that when God measures the universe, he says it's that big, a span of the hand. Right. And right. That's what God said, that the universe is just a span. Yeah. Amazing. It is. It truly is. Yeah, that stuck out to me too. Um, has anyone ever thought of? Okay, so the the main the main uh, I guess theme here is that Jesus is fully God and fully man, right? That's something that's kind of basic to our faith. It's very foundational. Um, you learn that. Early on, and when you become a believer, I mean that's something that's taught very early on. Um, but did you ever wonder why it's so important that we know that, and that we understand it, and that we most importantly believe it? Did that ever? You know what's it's, it fascinating to me is that it, it is the foundation of faith. Without it, it, once you come to understand it, you're not a Christian unless you do accept that. Right. But it's so vehemently denied outside of Christian faith. It's one of us absolutely vehement denied from the cults without exception. Always denied of JT and Christ. Always. Uh, you see, that's about the uh, Muslims. That's one of their vehement. They'll come out and attack that vehemently that mm -hmm. Jesus is not God. So that doctrine is vehemently denied outside mm -hmm. of Christian faith. So it is important to understand it. And when the attacks come, because they will in different areas. And, and say, well, yeah, that's right. I heard there was a good book written by a, a guy who went to be a woman, a young guy, actually, he passed away in 36. And he said, Seeking all of finding Jesus. And I've heard of that book. Yeah, I read the book, and it was so so good. You know, he was just solid Muslim, and, and he was beat up. And he, he enjoyed pounding Christians, and that's one of the things he pounded on Jesus not God. And how can a man, how can God die? You know, you've heard all the arguments. But, uh, yeah, it's the doctrine that outside these walls is denied 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I would argue that it is it is denied so vehemently because it is yes. so important. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, yeah the, the, the enemy knows. He, he's, not, he's, not, he's not stupid. He, he's going to attack those essential doctrines like the deity of Christ or like, you know, the... Um, the fact that man, man is, is hopelessly sinful, things like that. He's going to attack those doctrines because those are essential to our salvation. Um, yeah, so it, it's always, yeah, you're right. I, I think you said they're cults without exception. And yes, their, their main uh, <coughs> denial is that it's the deity of Christ. And I agree, yeah, there's, they all deny that. The big ones like Mormonism or, or Jehovah's Witness, that's a big thing for them. Right, the Mormons believe that Jesus was created, that he was a, a created being, and that he presented his plan of salvation to the Father, along with Lucifer, who they were, yeah, they were brothers. brothers. They, they were uh, they created, or they presented their plan of salvation to the Father. God um, accepted Jesus' plan, and he rejected Lucifer's plan. And, uh, yeah, that's so, it's a... Uh, yeah. yeah, the I was be and in before anything. He always was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the importance of the, your question. It's important that we know he was a man because he really could die. Right. But it was important that he was God, that he had the authority to do that for us. And so those, I mean, that's why I would see the importance of understanding that he was both. 
Yeah. Because if he was just a created being, it wouldn't matter that he died. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was God, and he, that gave him the authority to do that. Yeah. The fact that he was a man, he could actually die. It wasn't just a phantom made up thing. He actually died like a man. Yes. Died, so. Well, yeah, and that he knew before. God, that 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 was the whole purpose. That was his whole reason for being born. That how because here he was. He knew that, and as a child growing up, to always know that that's your purpose. Yeah. That, yeah. Pretty amazing. It is. It's it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was. I like what you said, Rob. That's a that's that's a good understanding of why it's important, right? Because there's there's some it, it all and it all started very shortly after the time after Jesus' crucifixion. There's there was a, a, a group of uh, heretics that would talk about how Jesus actually wasn't a man. They said that he was and there were there were the be, it was the beginning of Gnosticism. So we you know what agnost agnosticism is? Agnostic? Do, do, do you guys understand that term? That means Agnost agnostics mean believe or um, they think that you cannot fully understand God. So agnostic, agnostic, that's you cannot understand it. Gnostics believe that you that not only can you understand God, but they have a special understanding of God that only they possess. So they're like they elevate themselves above others because they're gnostics. They understand God more than others, or in a way that others don't. So the beginnings of that were um, that. The, the Gnostics denied the, the humanness of God. They thought they believed that he was just spirit and that all material things, in fact, I talked about this in the sermon, in the sermon a little bit, and I, I've studied it a, a lot of this. They believe that all material things are, 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 are sinful. They're, they're, they're not good. So God could never enter a man because man was material. He was you know, a, a material being. And so there, it would be impossible for him, for God and man to be to coexist like that. Um, and so, if you take away God, the humanness of, of Jesus, he he uh, he couldn't have died, right? He could not have died. A spirit can't die. A spirit is. I mean, our spirits are going to be. We're going to be alive forever for eternity. It's just a matter of where we're going to be in eternity. But so we won't. We're not going to die in that sense. Physically, our bodies, our human bodies, will die. But um, so when you deny the humanness of God, you deny that he died on the cross. Um, and, like Rob said, if you deny his deity, you deny that his death had the power to save us. Right? He, if he's not God, then he could not have uh, died for our sins. If he was just a man, if he was just a prophet like the Muslims believe, or if he was a created being like the Mormons believe, um, or if he was even, yeah, if he was an angel, like I believe the Jehovah's Witness believes that he was an angel, I'm not so sure. Like that, yeah, yeah um, then, then he would not have been God and he could not have forgiven us for our sins um, through his death. So it's very important in that sense. It's very, it's a crucial doctrine that if, 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 if you don't believe it, it's not, you know, there's <clears throat> salvation, you know, you, you, can, you could argue that not saved if you don't believe that doctrine. It's very crucial. Yeah, it's, it's also important to know when people come out with this false assertion that all religions are the same, there's just mild differences. Right. And that's an absolute lie. Yeah. All religions, it's actually the opposite way around. Yeah. There are just some superficial similarities, but all religions are absolutely different. And this is one doctrine that proves in fact all the other <coughs> religions are there reject the deity of Christ. So yeah. how can one, how can you all be the same when one says Jesus is God, one says he's not? That's, yeah. that's just an absolute, that's a law of contradiction. You can't do that. And both can't be true at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Um, okay, before we go into the questions, I wanted to, uh, I have a video I wanted to show you guys. Um, and it, and it kind of pertains to the question I just asked, which is why is this so important? Um, but it gets a little deeper in this. Um, the guy's name is Todd Friel. I don't, I don't know. You've probably heard me talk about him a lot in his breakfast. But he's able, he, 
you're much better than I am. He's able to get a lot of information in a short amount of time. So that's why I'm just showing the video. It's just better that way. So, let me figure this out. Him, and that is how we accept him 
And that is why the Chalcedonian Creed was written in the fifth century. Here's what they said. We then, following the Holy Fathers, all with one consent, teach men to confess one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the same perfect in Godhead and also perfect in manhood, truly God and truly man of a rational soul and body. Are you familiar with the Chalcedonian Creed? We don't recite this one much in church. They labored to be exceedingly precise, doing the math so that they could come up with orthodoxy. Uh, it continued, Jesus is consubstantial with the Father according to the Godhead and consubstantial with us according to the manhood. Uh, not sort of like, not co con with. He's God, he's man, he's consubstantial. Uh, more from Chalcedon, in all things like unto us without sin begotten before all ages of the Father according to the Godhead and in these latter days for us and for our salvation. Born of the Virgin Mary, the mother of God according to manhood. Don't panic, they were not focusing on Mary. They were focusing on the divinity of Jesus Christ. And then this, one and the same Christ, Son, Lord, only begotten to be acknowledged in two natures, inconfusedly, not lemony, unchangeably, he's still fully human, indivisibly, you can't divide him, inseparably, they stay together, the distinction of natures being by no means taken away by the union, but rather the property of each nature being preserved and concurring in one person and one subsistence, not parted or divided into two persons, but one and the same God and only begotten, God the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, as the prophets from the beginning have declared concerning him and the Lord Jesus Christ himself has taught us and the creed of the Holy Fathers has handed down to us. That is the correct definition of the hypostatic union of Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you're thinking, and what? Why this? Why do we even have to understand this? Because when we do, we read our Bibles and we go, whoa. This is so brilliant. Clearly a human being didn't write this book. Next, on Wretched. So it's, it's a lot, I know. I mean, that that creed, the Chalcedonian creed, that's a, that's a, I mean, it's a lot of stuff in one little paragraph there. Um, but, I mean, nevertheless, it's a, uh, it's foundational, right? And that's why the um, the so the church. This was, I think, the Chalcedonian Creed. I think said it was the fifth century, and the creeds, these these councils that they had, um, for the most part, were were formed, or they were they 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 had these councils in order to uh, counteract heresies that were coming into the church, right? So all these doctrines that, that the early church laid out, like the deity of Christ, like the manhood of Christ, were to just to, to, to um, battle against the, the heresies, the heretics that were coming into the church.